And joining us for more on tonight's topic is Sarasota Attorney John Taracco and Zach Murdoch, the local government reporter for the Herald Tribune. And I want to thank you all for being here because this is really a fascinating uh, story. It's gone on for so long. It's cost so much money. There are big principles involved and it has resulted in so much derision uh, in the city. But John, let me ask uh, you this because you disagree with this verdict, uh, do you not? Yeah, I mean, I, I disagree with the, the opinion of the court, I mean, respectfully, uh, but I think that this is set up very nicely for an appeal. Um, Why? Because the, he, the, the court found that all the elements were met, but that it was just simply a gathering versus a meeting. And um, I believe that there is some law that says that um, that differentiation doesn't really matter. You mentioned the, the, the state Supreme Court, but wouldn't this be something that Judge Eiton was aware of? I, he may have been. I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I mean, that's why we have courts of appeal. So, you know, uh, but the elements were clearly met. Uh, deliberation is not required. So um, he obviously made the decision, and you know, the way he did. And, and uh, I respect it, but um, though obviously I think that they said that they're going to appeal. So um, I think that this is in a very good position for an appeal. Zach, what kind of impact has this case had on city government? Well, I think there is some, you know, you, you mentioned it caused some derision. I think there is some of that. And, and you get a lot of folks who are ardent supporters of Commissioner Chapman who really disagree with the folks who kind of fault her for taking this as far as the case has gone. You know, I wouldn't go so far as to say that it's divided the commission by any means, but I think, you know, each of the commissioners have their own opinion about exactly how far the case well, should Well, you know, as we talked about, there's so many different issues here. There, there is the Sunshine Law issue, which we have talked about numerous times on this, this broadcast, but there's also the cost of litigating it, which mm -hmm. um, is the same but different as an issue. And you saw Martin Hyde uh, talking about the sheer amount of money and mm -hmm. some people oppose uh, Commissioner Chapman just because this is money that the taxpayers should not have um, uh, had to spend. So has this impacted the behavior of commissioners outside the chambers in terms of where they go and who they talk to? You know, I don't think so. I think the city in a way has really just been a lot more careful about how they approach those meetings. Uh, you know, the, the city clerk testified during the trial at the time that uh, after this issue came up, and maybe even a little before it, uh, depending on the timing, they actually do put out meeting notices for these types of things, just saying that more than one commissioner may attend, you know, the uh, neighborhood association meeting or a chamber of commerce meeting, things like that. And so they, the city itself just treads a little more carefully, though the commissioners are still out and about all the time. But, uh, you know, I imagine they do think about it a little bit. Well, let me put this question to, to both of you, because as I have remarked uh, from time to time, because I've worked all over Florida, this doesn't seem to be much of an issue in places like Tampa or Miami, where you see one or more commissioners at different events, whether they are social or community oriented. And it's been pointed out to me the reason why it's litigated here uh, in Sarasota is because you have... Uh, Mr. Barfield and people con concerned about it who live right here. So um, I, I know just because it's not litigated in other communities doesn't make it right in other communities, but it seems that local public officials are more under the microscope than right up the road in, in, in Tampa. That may well very well be true, but also um, Mr. Barfield and uh, Attorney Mogensen have also sued the, the governor. Um, so they've actually gone outside of the community as well, and they were successful, and they settled. Remember, this matter could have been settled for $500 with no admission of guilt. Now they're at $340,000. Now we're entering an appeal. You're talking several hundred more thousands of dollars. If they don't prevail, then they owe attorney's fees to uh, attorney Mogensen, so you're talking, you could be talking upwards of almost a million dollars. Now, it's important to note that since this case started, the city has uh, bought sh insurance so mm -hmm. that if there's a future uh, lawsuit like this or others, mm -hmm. commissioners, uh, you know, the, the bill would be covered. But, but Zach, uh, it, with the, the, the price of this uh, con continuing to skyrocket, how does the city pay this? Is there any discussion about how to mitigate uh, the, the legal bills here? I mean, at this point, no is the short answer. I mean, uh, so long as the case goes on, the city 
is in the position they're in defending Commissioner Chapman because as she talks about this was in her official course of duty. It wouldn't be until uh, a final ruling is made up through the appellate courts that we really have a good feel of exactly how that's going to work out. And honestly, at that point, it becomes another fight between Citizens for Sunshine and, and Mr. Schultz. And you said earlier that this has not affected the work of the, com of the commission, but you know, as we said from the outset, this caused so much derision inside the city um, with, with two camps here. Uh, how in the world are people getting along and getting the people's business done and listening to what the community says on the whole variety of issues? Well, I, in a lot of ways, we talked a little bit uh, earlier about this, there's some, the important context of this case is also that it comes from a really tumultuous argument about uh, Dr. Marbit's initial homelessness study. And so in a lot of ways, you're seeing that old fight continue to drag out through this case. And frankly, those are issues that they're still grappling with on the commission, and, and the case just kind of exemplifies those types of arguments that they still have. Almost a, a paralysis in, in mm -hmm. Sarasota because if you walk downtown, nothing much has changed. There is you know, more homeless people sitting on the streets and uh, walking the streets than uh, many communities in, in Florida. Mm -hmm. And the irony is, is that it's over a lot of it has to do with money. Mm -hmm. Well, then you make the case yeah. that the money that has been spent it's on this case could have been better uh, spent in terms of finding some kind of solution, whether it's a shelter or whatever. Yeah, and, and I mean, I personally, I'm a supporter of uh, Commissioner Chapman. I supported her when she ran. I support her today. I think she's great on policy. It just so happens that it's a different story when this is your own issue and you're paying for it yourself versus the taxpayers. And I just think that um, while she may not agree with it, maybe that $500 price tag was a lot more appealing than what we're looking at right now as, as taxpayers. Is there any effort or indication that both sides here are trying to find some way out of this to end this and, and just you know end this case and the legal bill with it? Absolutely not. No, I, I don't. Honestly, last week's ruling may have been a surprise in, in some way and that some people thought it would have gone in favor of Citizens for Sunshine, but in the end it was going to go to an appeal either direction. So I don't think anyone is surprised that it goes on, and I don't see any settlement in the works for any of this. Okay. Um, and as far as you know, has there been any kind of precedence for this in terms of other cases that even th th though there may be some direction by the state Supreme Court that you have a lower court that seems to take a different road? Sure. Uh, these cases are um, appealed regularly. Um, and they actually get special treatment because from the courts of appeals. So there isn't anything directly on point here. There are some old cases from 1969, but I think that most of those, and there's actually a case from 1950, I think that those are going to um, prove very um, illustrative of, of what, what happened here um, and that really whether or not there's more litigation here on, this, on these Sunshine Matters or not, all public officials throughout the state need to keep things in the sunshine. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us tonight, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you.